Hello, this is Shiley from Sheepishly Made and MCS Livestock. Today we'll be doing the Winter Sheep Felting Tutorial, which will have wet felting and needle felting techniques. If you're new to wet felting, make sure you watch the How to Wet Felt video before completing um, this project. So let's get felting. So here are our base supplies. I have the bath towel on the bottom on the table, and I have a couple layers of bubble wrap. I have a foam roller and my homemade roller here. I go more in depth with the materials in the how to wet felt video. Um, we also have the fabric mesh. I have an extra cloth to wipe up any extra soap and water. I have my soap bar and my water bottle that I fill with hot soapy water to wet down the wool. So this will be the start of the wet felting portion of the video, show you how we lay it out. I have a few different colors of wool here. I have white and black and a little bit of gray and blue. So we're going to start with the white. This is going to be on the bottom of the project. So you want to lay it out in really thin layers. We're going to do four layers of wool. So the bottom you want to be white for the snow on the winter sheep. So we just lay out the white fibers. First the direction of the fibers will be going up and down. And then I'm going to start laying out the top portion, which is a dark blue. And again, we're just taking real thin amount of roving at a time and laying it out. You want the different colors to overlap slightly. And then layer two, we're going to change directions going left and right and just do the same thing, doing the blue on top and the white on bottom. You want to alternate directions on each layer. And layer three will be going up and down again, doing the same thing. And then layer four, we will do left to right our direction and this will be the final layer so we're going to lay out the white and the blue first and then we're going to add i have a little bit of some grayish type locks for the top and a little bit of white wool as well for the moon so i add a little bit of dark gray here at the very last layer too and here are some of my locks so I'm just putting a couple locks and then I'm taking a little bit of wool and just laying it over top just a little bit so I can still see through to the locks. This will help felt the locks down better. And I'm just taking a little bit of white wool and putting it in a circle shape for the moon. And then we'll make the sheep body. So I have these nice dorset locks. They're nice and fluffy with a little bit of yellowed ends. So it helps pop the sheep out and make it give a more natural sheep look. So I'm just making kind of an oval shape with the body with some locks and then a little bit of white wool over top of the locks to help felt it down. Just adding a few more locks on top and then we'll start the wet felting process. So you want to lay your fabric mesh over top and to see the more in-depth portion of the wet felting, watch the how to wet felt video. But you start to wet it down. You want the wool to be completely soaked through, but not laying in a puddle of water. So I'm soaking it down with my hot soapy water and then gently moving my hands across it first to distribute the water. And you can also lift your mesh up to check on it every once in a while. Now we're gonna to start to felt the piece. So you wanna slowly increase the agitation. This video sped up quite a bit. So you definitely wanna go slower than this at first. This is just to give you the basic idea. So I move my hands all over felting the wool. And I'm just checking on it, make sure nothing moved too much. This one's a fairly simple wet felting piece so you don't have to worry about your wool moving as much compared to a more detailed piece. And then we'll start the rolling process of felting, which I'm going to skip because I go in depth into that in the how to wet felt video, which you need to watch. And after rolling, you do a pinch test on your wool to see if it's one piece of fabric or if you need to um, felt it some more. 
Then I did the filling process and I'm completely done. So you want to completely rinse your piece out and lay it to dry before starting needle felting. And for needle felting, you need a felting mat underneath your project. I use a wool felting mat. Then I have a couple felting needles and a few different colors of wool, white, black, red, and a little bit of locks. So I'm going to start with making a head for the sheep with some of my black. You can also make a white headed sheep if you prefer. So I'm just making kind of a little oval shaped head. And I'm going to make a little droopy ear on this side of the sheep. You can't see most of it, but a little bit of it will be sticking down. You can see a little ear there. And I'm going to make little stumpy legs with a little bit of my black. They're just going to be real short because the sheep is really woolly in this picture. And then I just add a little bit of extra locks here at the end, making my sheep a little fluffier using the um, little bit of yellow tips to my advantage and putting them on the bottom so you can see the sheep a little better. And then we're going to start to make the barn. So I actually blended a little bit of my red wool with my black to give it a darker red color since this is a night scene. So to do that, I lay the two colors on top of each other and then just pull them apart together and lay them back on top of each other and keep doing that until they are blended. It's not an exact blend, but it is a pretty good job um, for just using your hands. And then we're going to make a little barn shape here. I'm going to try to do a hip roof, which is what you see on a lot of old barns. It has a couple different angles to it, but the bottom part of the barn is just kind of a square. And you can just make a cute little angled roof. Blending a little bit more wool to finish the barn. I love using this method when I'm doing a needle felting project that I don't have to hunt down a certain color. I can just blend a couple together to get my desired um, texture and blend gives a nice variation of color sometimes and is really great for grasses as well. Just working on the barn on the roof here. Um, there's a little bit of overhang of red where the roof connects to the bottom portion of the barn there. Just let it overhang a little bit. And then I take a little bit of the white wool to make some snow on the roof. Just nice and fluffy looking. I'm going to make the upper door of the barn. So just take a very little bit of white wool, very carefully, deliberately um, stab the wool in, and then the main door on the bottom. So just use a little bit of white at a time to create the doors. And a little bit of white wool around the bottom of the barn as some snow drifts. And then we're going to make a couple small sheep. So I'm using my locks again to make the bodies of the sheep. Now these guys are really small. So I take a very small amount of black wool to make the head and the legs, which is just a very small version of the larger sheep in the front. I'm going to make one more sheep here. And that'll be the last addition to the project. Now if your moon is looking a little lopsided, um, or a different shape, you can always add more white wool to your moon to give it a nice round shape. You can add more sheep or even a fence here by the barn. Whatever your heart desires, be creative. So here's the final piece. And you can even cut it to size and frame it. So thank you for watching. You can find more kits like this on my Etsy shop. We'll see you next time. Happy felting!